Hi, this is Mike Muchmore, Software Analyst for PCMag.com, and I'm going to show you some of the neat new features in Windows 7. The new operating system for Microsoft reduces the disk requirement and runs faster on low-powered machines compared with Vista, its predecessor. But it also sports plenty of new user interface, networking, and customization features. I use TechSmith's Camtasia Studio to record this demo. The biggest difference you'll notice at first glance is the new taskbar. See how the start button glows when your cursor is over it? In the Windows 7 taskbar, you don't have to click on an icon to see what documents are open in an app. Just hover the mouse over the taskbar icon and a thumbnail of each open document, or in the case of Internet Explorer, web page, will appear. Moving the mouse over the thumbnail will display a full page preview and clicking on it will open the page. Also new are Aero Desktop Enhancements. One of these lets you clear the screen if it becomes cluttered and lets you focus on the window you want. Just shake the title bar. Another lets you maximize a window by dragging its title bar to the top of the screen. Pulling it down resizes. You can also pull the title bar all the way to the size to take up exactly half of the screen if you have another window. The final arrow enhancement, Arrow Peak, lets you view your desktop by hovering the mouse over this lower right corner of the screen. This shows you your gadgets and if you click on it you'll actually view the desktop. Gadgets in Windows 7 are no longer confined to the sidebar but can live anywhere on the desktop. You right click anywhere on the desktop and choose gadgets and you can drag them out of this dialog. If you double click these they will appear in the old position to the right side. Taskbar properties. Right click the taskbar and choose properties for some nice customizations. Windows 7 lets you control how many notifications you'll see in the notification area. In this dialog, you can tell Windows to show or hide a program's tray icon and notifications. You can also simply check this box if you always want to see everything, which is the way I like to do it. The wireless system tray icon down here lets you see all of your Wi-Fi networks and connect to them. If the network requires a password or even a web page form, this tool will let you enter it. New themes. You can right click on the desktop and choose personalize to see several appealing options. Just click on one to see what it looks like. Notice that some of them have more than one background. These are switched periodically by default every 30 minutes. Microsoft hired some pretty gifted artists to create these images including architecture, cartoon like characters, landscapes, nature, artistic scenes, and United States views. Windows Classic looks like Windows from a long time ago. You can also get more themes online, and Vista themes still work. Libraries. This is a new concept in Windows 7. They're basically folders that can draw their contents from multiple folders, either on the same machine, an external drive, or on a networked PC. Each library folder has a little link stating the number of locations it draws its contents from. Here's two locations. Click on this to add more. The library concept has some usefulness, but I wonder if it could add unnecessary confusion. Jump lists. These are options that appear next to some applications. Recent pages, they only appear for these large first page of the start menu items. Home group and network setup. Whenever you connect your PC to a new internet connection, Windows will ask whether it's a home, work, or public location. Different access rights are permitted depending on which you choose. If you choose home, then computers will become part of a home group, can become part of a home group. This means you can share documents and media in libraries and printers. 
Here's where you choose which type of location your network is. The new media player included with Windows 7 lets you stream your music and videos to other devices on your home network and allows internet access to the content. Media Center gives you a TV interface on your PC. You can play movies, television, and turn your PC into a DVR if you have a tuner. You can also share media libraries among computers connected to your home group, stream TV over the internet, and quickly scroll across a large collection with Turbo Scroll. After all these years, Windows finally has a new version of Paint and Calculator and WordPad. These have the ribbon interface, which is easier for touch input, which we'll see later. Windows Live Essentials. Many of the apps that used to be included in Windows are now available as a download as the Windows Live Essentials. These include Messenger for instant messaging with MSN and Yahoo contacts, a mail client which works with POP or Hotmail accounts, Windows Live Movie Maker, a very easy way to edit video, Windows Live Photo Gallery, a decent image editor and organizer. There's also family safety parental controls and an Internet Explorer toolbar. The version of Internet Explorer, version 8, included with Windows 7, by the way, is faster and more featureful than version 7, which was included with Vista. But it still trails competitors like Firefox, Safari, and Chrome in JavaScript performance and adoption of new web standards. And now here's Nicole Price Facing to show us some of the touch input features in Windows 7. I'm here with the newest Gateway One, equipped with Windows 7 to talk about multi-touch. So it looks like your average touch screen, but when you pull open the Programs menu, you will see the Microsoft Touch Pack for Windows 7. Now that opens up a number of programs, which we can also see in the Gateway Touch Portal right here. So some of the more interesting ones to look at, we have the Microsoft Collage. Now this is all the tricks you've seen with images already, resizing, rotating, moving around. You can flick the, the bottom pane, pane to see all the different images you have. Save it, put it on your desktop. There are all sorts of other cool tricks. You've got Microsoft Surface Globe. Now you get used to the double tap. It works out eventually. And now this really utilizes all the cool little tricks you know about multi-touch. Zooming, flicking, turning, rotating. All that neat stuff. There's all sorts of programs that take advantage of, of the multi-touch features. And once you get out of you know, the touch portal, you can also go into IE and just see it you know, on a day-to-day -day use. For example, the oops, backwards and forwards in your browser. Zooming in and out. Even opening links in new tabs. Thanks, that looks no pretty cool. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this visual tour of some of the new stuff in Windows 7. I think you'll find the new operating system more enjoyable than Microsoft's previous efforts, both in usability and performance. Don't forget to check out my review on PCMag.com for a deeper dive into all that Windows 7 offers. For PCMag.com, this is Mike Muchmore. Thanks for watching.